Today begins a third video in this Hickok 6000 restoration series. Today's calibration, and we're going to see how difficult the calibration of this really is. I got to imagine that it's not going to be as difficult as an oscilloscope like a Tektronix or what have you, right? But we're going to get underway. And in reading some of the online documentation, I've come to find that all of the work that I had done in the first video and the verification in the second video was in fact um, part of the calibration or lended itself uh, towards the calibration as uh, written in uh, a link that I'll post above as what is considered to be uh, an accepted summary of the calibration technique for this device as derived from the military calibration for the military version of this unit as a way to understand it, right? But what we're going to do is we're going to jump in the section right after where I had left off in my work. And what that is, is going to be an inspection of the function of the short lights. And we had shown in the previous video that the short lights all work, they all light up. And the first exercise is going to be ensuring that, that we can produce a short and the lights go out when there is a short. So we're going to start with that first. I've started the meter off in the zero position. Everything's set at zero. All these switches are set to zero. Uh, everything is off. I'm going to fire it up now on the, on the Variac applying power. And I'm just going to let the unit heat up. And then I'm going to adjust the line test as one would normally do when they bring up this unit. There may be some parallax in the camera, but that's just fine. When this comes to temperature, we'll begin. I've repositioned the camera for a better viewing of the switches down here and the short lights. We look in the book and we see that there is a supplied matrix that allows us to emulate with the switches uh, the shutting off of these lights. When they're in the zero position, when they match up in the zero position, nothing happens, right? It's only out of the zero when they're aligned that we can see a short. I had to go back to the manual on this one because apparently this test only works with cathode and suppressor. It doesn't, doesn't work with any other of these. You can't uh, uh, short these to get an expected result, right? Or what I perceive to be an expected result. So I'm just going to go and try this, right? So we're on zero, so all the lights are on. And we see it goes out. And I'm just going to work my way all the way around and make sure that it goes on and off as I do that. So back on. And we arrive back at zero. Uh, that indication tells me that based on the test, the, the short slide is working. And um, I'm going to agree that based on the test, the short slide is working. I'm going to move on to the next test. So that's it. In this calibration test, I have adjusted line test so that the needle is exactly in the middle. Don't worry about the shadow or anything like that. The needle is exactly in the middle. And what I should be seeing as I have my meter on the back of the uh, this meter here should be 58 and a quarter millivolts, right? But what I'm actually seeing is 61. And the tolerance I think is good for uh, a 0.1 or 0.2 out of spec is okay. But this is definitely not okay. So what we're going to do is we're gonna adjust the potentiometer that's in the back of this unit, right? So we're gonna take a look at that. We're gonna make that adjustment and we're gonna ensure that when this thing is at line test, that when I look at that meter at 50%, I should be seeing uh, 58 and a quarter in, in and around. And here is that potentiometer in back of the meter where we're going to be making those adjustments. And when I make the adjustments, it's gonna change uh, the deflection and then I'm gonna to have to readjust the, the line to center it and then take a look at the multimeter and see that that's back on par. So I'm gonna to have to keep going back and forth with this as I tweak it. This was a hurting potentiometer in need of much deoxid. You'll also notice that I'm connecting down here on the board and not on the pot because I feel as though the cables pull on the pot and skew the results. So I'm just staying away from it. I'm only using it to make these adjustments. There we go, it sounds a lot better now. That's a little too much. There we go, 58.2. I revisited this step for a moment because I built a, uh, a stand for this calibration. On the left side is the box 
for this unit that holds up the left side properly and on the right I have this uh, case that I use for amplifiers and they're the same height so it's it's level it allows me to work under the unit while it's on and why I did that was I want the meter to be uh, sitting here flat as well so that it, it sits as it would run as if uh, the meter were in normal operation and I just wanted to verify that the calibration was still good because if you have the meter uh, off kilter you'll get a different reading than you would if it were running how it would when you would actually uh, test equipment and this first test is is important because if the meter is not right then every subsequent calibration step you're going to do is going to be wrong based on that meter right so I did uh, verify that at line test uh, the reading is correct I'm going to point out though as specific as they make this 58.25 I'll tell you right now that Having that needle on that middle hash of what is a 1500 right here, or the very middle of 1500, which is line test, just a, a, a hair, uh, like a less than a tenth of a millimeter in each direction is going to skew that result. I could, I could turn that filament knob uh, ever so slightly. You won't even see the deflection on the, on the needle, right? And the needle's not even moving, and you're watching this thing move, right? That's how precise they're asking for this so yeah for the purposes of calibration obviously you want to take that extra time make sure it's perfectly centered and get that perfect reading because that's what this is all about but at the end of the day if, if you're off a little I, I wouldn't lose any sleep over this having successfully calibrated the meter we're going to move on to the next step and the next step ensures that we have our extremely important 2.5 volts ac when we press the test button and that voltage should appear on pins 5 and 8 of the octal socket. And the way this works is, is that if everything is set up, uh, the 2.5 volts should exist when the line test is situated here in this mode. Sort of like a, um, it's, re it's reporting back that if everything is correct, that's what the expected voltage should be. And therefore, when we hit test and we uh, check this for 2.5 volts, we expect that when we come off of test that this should fall back to line test, right? So we'll, it'll make sense when I conduct this in, in the order of operations. But before we do that, the standard configuration for this device is for a 6L6 with zero bias and zero shunt. So I'm gonna set that up now, and that is HS 534. Right, eight one uh, function A. So we're gonna set our multimeter to AC volts, and we're gonna connect this to pins five and eight. So ignore the parallax. I assure you that that this is exactly on line test. There is a shadow that makes it look as though it's off by uh, one hash. Right. So I've got everything set up. Pay attention to the, uh, to the fluke. And I'm gonna hit test. We're gonna look at the AC voltage, right? And, and this one's not far off, right? 2.53, that's not bad, but, but it's, it's out of specification, right? You always wanna come back though and look at line test because if line test is off, it's all for nothing. And I am looking, believe it or not, as I stand here looking directly over the unit, my line test is a bit high, and that did invalidate the test. So let me, let me get it back in. That's where line test should be. Let me, let me do that again. Yeah, it's not, it's not, not too bad at all. It's a little... Yeah, and that, that's dead on, that's dead on line test, right? So it's, it's a smidgen high. We're, for the purpose of this demonstration, we're going to adjust that pot. So don't worry. Either way, we're going to adjust it. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to bring it down just a hair. Here is that pot that I'll be working with. It's the one with the blue knob on top, and there is some glue to hold it in place. I can't have the camera showing while I adjust it, so I wanted to point it out now. 
I've already broken calibration and that's allowed me to bring the knob back and forth to clear the wipers on it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit test. I, I see that right now my line test is good and it should be out of cal and we can see that it is, right? So I'm under the unit now. I'm adjusting the line for 2.5. I'll tell you what's going on here. I'm adjusting the line in. I'm trying to anyway. So we'll call that 2.5. Now I'm letting go. And now that I'm letting go, I'm looking at line test. And I'm adjusting, now I'm adjusting that blue pot, right? To get the line test right in the middle, right there. So now let's look at this exercise. I may be off by parallax. So now I'm letting go, right? And now i am got it right at line test. Now I'm pushing the button. And now I'm right at 2.5. And I'm letting go. And I'm right back at line test. That's what that pot is for, right? The 2.5 volt is coming from here. This is where you're getting your 2.5 volts from, right? Watch. I'm going to hit test. See that 2.5? Look, I'm going to turn the line. And now it's 2.43 and what have you. You're getting the 2.5 by adjusting the line. It's when I let go of test. It's that pot that makes the correlation between the 2.5 volts and putting it right there at line test. So now that is fully calibrated. So before I want to continue, I, I want to point out that uh, subsequent tests on this device assumed a thousand uh, uh, ohm per volt voltmeter would be used to make these measurements. And obviously this uh, meter right here is not one of those. So what we're going to be doing uh, going forward, or at least where required, is we're going to be shunting the uh, inputs, the leads, in order to use the values originally provided uh, as a basis for calibration. Now, the required value for the shunt of 250K, I, I don't actually have. What I do have on hand is um, some 1% tolerance uh, 1 meg resistors. I got four of them, so I'll show you that with these together I got I got a nice value there 249.6 so this should be okay I'm gonna bring these together and these are gonna be used as a shunt for this meter and that's what we're gonna to use to measure our AC voltages so before we turn anything on I just want to talk about the layout we can see the probes are going directly into 3 and 8 for our next test which I'll talk about but we could also see that we have these alligator clips that are making its way down to the shunt in the box, right? So that's what that is. It's shunting across those two leads. And this brings us to our next test. And this is a test of the plate voltage on pins three and eight. And we should expect that when we hit the test button, we should see a value of 150 volts um, plus or minus three volts. It's worth noting that with this test applied correctly, two of the short lights do go out, right? So we can see that here. And if I remove it, the lights come back on. First and foremost, before anything, make sure that line test is absolutely perfect. Not only do I check for line test, I'm also checking for that 1500 that is, that is centered under that 1500, which I admit is a little difficult with the camera. So I actually do this twice, once on camera and once I move the camera out of the way so I get my face right over it, right? Once that's done, and because these are test probes, I like to push them nice and tight to make sure there's a good connection. Then I hit test, and we're going to look for 150 volts on the fluke. We can see that everything looks good at 150, 151. Yeah, this voltage is well within tolerance for the plus or minus 3 volts on 150. So I'm not going to make any adjustment. What I will do is I'm going to pull the shunt right quick and give you a reading off what the voltmeter would show without it. And that's showing about 194 volts without the shunt. The next is the high screen test, a very similar test, except it's conducted on pins four and eight. We see different short lights are out on this one, and it's going to use the same uh, method with the shunt. We're gonna see 135 volts plus or minus three. And that's looking just fine. There's no need to do any adjustments there either. Not that we could, right? I'm just saying there's no need for concern. 
So that's the high screen test. I will note that on the high screen test with the removal of the shunt, there is no apparent difference in the reading. So.